Good morning, YouTube. It's Victor and Lara Black. And today we have uh, today we're going to go pick up Chichan Bachan as usual as we usually do on the weekends. And uh, today we're doing what's it called? Clean something? What's it called? Green camp. A green clean. campaign. It's clean campaign. We you said green, but I but I thought it was green too. It's actually called clean campaign. You like doing that? Can you explain what it is? Um. So. Around here, the people who live around here, and and the, the stuff and the stuff that's fall that <laughs> things that are falling on the ground around here, we we make them pretty. But basically, we pick up garbage. Beck, you can see that pick up garbage, right? Pick up garbage. Say it. Pick up garbage. We pick up garbage, okay? So that's our, that's called the clean campaign. But I thought it was green campaign because, you know, they like to use green a lot here when they're talking about, you know, being environmentally conscious and all that. Right? Um, you, what do you feel? Uh, what time is that? Could you have like it? Nine o'clock? You don't know. Okay. Anyway, it's nine o'clock, I think. So, so it's now 7.07 .07 a.m. And we got about a 30 minute drive to pick up the in-laws and uh, they want to come back and uh, we should be back by eight for sure easily and well actually no a little past eight and the green campaign I'm pretty the clean campaign or green paint plant campaign whatever starts at nine o'clock and for some reason Bachan and is Jichan coming too or just Bachan? You know? They're both maybe both are coming so both our, um, both his grandparents are coming. They don't, I don't know why, but they want to. Do you want to go? Do you want to clean up? Mm. Why? It's fun. How is it fun? It's fun. It's fun because it's fun. Okay. So I often pick up garbage in my neighborhood by myself, um, but not to the extent that this will be what we'll be doing today. We're going to get garbage bags and the whole community is going to get together at 9 a.m. And walk around our neighborhood and pick up garbage which is good so i'll do it i'll uh, make sure we get stuff everything yeah uh but of course in three months it'll be all dirty again people people throw garbage in the weirdest places here it kind of pisses me off like there'll be a bush right a bush along the side of the road and then we'll, we'll throw a can of coffee right on top of the bush like why do you do that i don't understand um it really pisses me off for yeah just throw it away so anyway, today uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Saka Jinja incident that happened last week. Last on the 20th, I think, I think it was May 25th, a guy Jin, he's a British guy. Um, apparently, apparently, this is the backstory a little bit. He's a, apparently a tour guide and he works for some company and nobody knows if he's, lic he's really licensed or not. And I didn't even know you needed a license to be a tour guide, but I guess you could do. But I mean, if you think about it, when you're, if your friends come to your, if, if my friends if my, or my parents, whatever, come to Japan, I'm going to take them around. So I'm kind of a tour guide, right? So, I mean, how hard could it be? I mean, unless you're, I guess they're concerned with uh, people spreading false information. I don't know, like, uh, officially. Anyway, this guy is a tour guide apparently in Japan. And he's a he's a British young British man, and he's apparently lived here in Japan for eight years. And he had some uh, he has he's had some experiences. And apparently there's a there's a site that rated him, and there were some complaints about him, uh, according to a, a friend's guy who made a YouTube video about this too. Um, but last on the 25th he was at Yasaka Jinja, which I've been to uh, uh, in Kyoto, a very beautiful large shrine. And it's kind of funny because if you watch if you watch the video a little bit later about this, I'll link the video in the description. So I don't want this video taken down. But if you link the video, if you watch the video, though, there's a woman who appears later who says calls it a temple, but it's actually a shrine. Shrines are and temples are kind of easily mixed up in Japan because some of them ha have some of the same symbols, and, uh, and it kind of could be confusing. But basically, shrines have the tori, the red. There's a gate that looks like this, you know, like two two horse two. Uh, vertical uh, posts and then a horizontal post going across. That's totally, it's a red, big red gate. Um, anyway, so not important, but 
this guy was giving a tour and at Yasaka Jinja there are these large thick ropes and at the very top there's a bell that you can ring. Have you ever rung the bell before? You've, you've done it before. Yeah, not a big deal. And I actually found some video kids ringing it, like really ringing it really hard. But they're kids, so they're like three year old, so they can't really ring it too hard. But they're doing their best. Anyway, um, last November, some gaijin rang it way too hard and people got pissed off. And there was, you know, that was uploaded to the internet as well. So you can find that on the, uh, I think you can find it on YouTube. But this happened last week. The woman apparently rang it too loud and it was between the hours of 6 p.m. and uh, 5 a.m. I have to assume or something like that anyway at night and uh, some woman was filming them some Japanese woman was filming these gaijin as they did it and she warned them and the video starts with her telling you guys don't understand why I'm angry too and, and it, from the conversation it's hard to tell exactly what happened but it, it appears that it, they've already apologized for, being, for ringing the bell too loud and apparently uh they were ringing the bell against the gate which i don't understand uh, there's not uh, against the fence i'm sorry against they were ringing the bell against the fence and she was pissed off about that but it really becomes heated when he comes up to her the guy the gaijin guy the british guy says you know do you speak English? Do you speak English quite a few times? Yeah, okay. Now, do you speak English? Do you speak English? Do you speak English? English? Do you speak English? And she's like, well, you speak Japanese. Or... She goes, yeah, I've lived here for eight years. Oh. Um, and, uh, but he keeps saying, could you please leave us alone in English? Can you leave us alone, please? Could you please leave us alone? Keeps insisting on speaking English, and she claims that is racism. Could you leave us alone, please? Sabetsu. You know what sabetsu is, Becca? Sabetsu means racism. It's when like someone treats you differently because you're you're from a different. You look differently. Like for example, Papa's gaijin, right? Yeah. Right. So if someone says, "Oh, you're gaijin," so you're you can't you can do this or you can't do this or you're good at this or you're bad at this. That's kind of that's kind of racism. You understand? Right. Do kids, the kids at school ever say anything about you because you're half? Yeah. At, at your school, the kids ever, ever say anything like, "Oh, big half da karar nani da"? They ever say anything about you being half, half gaijin? Uh, Not really. Yeah, English, 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 English. Oh, that's all. But they're nice to you. No problem. Mm. Okay. So they sometimes ask him if he can speak English or not. They said, you can speak English, can't you? Because you're, you're a half guy too. Anyway, uh, the problem is like, um, the, the problem comes in when he insists on speaking English with her, despite the fact that he obviously speaks Japanese fairly well. And she claims that that insistence is a form of racism. And then he gets all prissy and says, what do you mean racism? What's racism? Sabetsu, sabetsu. He goes, Nani ga sabetsu? She goes, you're, you're, you know, you're, the fact that you, you're speaking English to me, you're insisting on English. And then she says, uh, she says, go away, you're being rude. You're being very, uh, well, she said, you're being very rude, leave us alone. Rude, oh my. And she picks up the word rude, like she obviously does understand some English. And she said, rude, you're being rude. Omai, and she says the word omai, and this is where it becomes kind of interesting. Uh, well, she said, you're being very rude. Leave us alone. Yeah, rude, omai. Interesting. And if you don't understand the nuance, using the word omai, which you may pick up from um, kan from manga or anime, is uh, lower. And little Vic, you use omai sometimes with mom and dad, right? Yeah. You say omai to me and mom, and mom sometimes. Tamani. Tamani, but should you? Is that good or bad? Bad. That's bad. <laughs> and what does mom say? When you say omai to mom, what does she say? Anata. Yeah, she says, say anata. Anata is polite. Don't say omai. So my wife. Um, oh, mama says, oh, I'm sorry. Mama says, you're omai, right? Right? Yes, you have. You've said it before. I've heard you. And mama got warned you not to say that. Oh, to me, you mean? Me, you mean, you mean Papa? 
Oh, he only calls me oh my. Why do you call me oh my? That's it. That's simple. That's bad, right? Why do you call me oh my? Huh? That is that is what you say right before you give an excuse. <laughs> because mom's mad at me. So when I do something bad, it calls me oh my. <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't bother me, even though it should. It doesn't bother me because I don't know why. I just, I just think it's funny. <laughs> because, you know, I'm quite comfortable. Um, so it doesn't bother me. But um, anyway, you shouldn't say oh my to people you don't know for sure. So she says, um, he says, you're being rude. And she said, oh, oh rude, oh my God. And then he said, oh my, and then he picks up on that word. He knows that the word oh my is, is impolite. You know, obviously he's been in Japan for eight years. He knows that's impolite. And then he starts saying, damate okay, right? What, what are you saying, damate okay? Oh my, damate okay. Goodbye. So he says, shut up, you, shut up. Uh, and then, and it's quite fluent. Like his insults are pretty fluent. Like, to be honest, I, I would not feel comfortable insulting someone in Japanese because I've never had to. I, but he, he seems it flows right off his tongue. Like he's done it quite a few times. <laughs> Um, I, even though I've lived in Japan much longer than he has, uh, and I, I would say, I would, you know, defend myself. As we say in Spanish, when you can speak a language fairly well, my, my Japanese is pretty good that I can defend myself, but, um, I am not good at insulting people, uh, or as good as he is, you know? Like, do what do you say? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it is. See? I can't even remember what he said. But anyway, that becomes pretty rude. And there's another guy, there's a bald guy in the, a big fat bald uh, gaijin guy. I think he's British too, or European in the uh, video. And he's like, get out of my sight, get out of my sight, which is pretty rude. Um, enough, enough, get out of my sight. Yeah, okay. But you know, it's, it's hard to tell. I, I showed that video to a few students. Uh, Japanese students and uh, they're older women and they were like there's something wrong with this woman <laughs> obviously it looks like she's like looking for you know she's looking for problems like any, any thoughts what do you think about the woman who took the video mm. hmm? she's, she's normal you think she's normal um but it seems to me that she might be looking for a little bit of trouble. I mean, why is she filming anyway? And um, here's what happened as a result of the of that incident. The next day, the shrine published on the website that they would no longer be allow allowing people to ring the bell between, I think it was, I want to say 5 p.m. to 6 a.m., which sounds logical, but I think it was actually 6 p.m. to 5 a.m., which seems like 5 a.m. is a little bit, a little bit early to be ringing a bell. But anyway... Um, yeah, so they did that. But the reason they gave on the website was also not just foreigners. They said because of, I think, I think they, they actually cited the incident, but they said not just because of foreigners, because of Japanese too. So it wasn't just foreigners who've done that. Japanese have done that. And like I said, I found a video on YouTube of some Japanese kids ringing the bell pretty hard. But again, it wasn't at night. So maybe that's kind of the issue. It's, I mean, it's not the fact that they were ringing the bell too hard or they were clanging it up against a fence. Uh, or that they were foreign, but also that it was at nighttime. But um, where this becomes interesting is that this woman who posted the video, she basically called out for support on on Twitter, or I refuse to call it the other word. Uh, and um, and there and this view this video on Twitter has gotten 25 million views, and people are like trying are out there to to destroy this guy's life. And it's not a cut and dried issue. And the fact that everyone is targeting this foreigner for being rude is uh, when in fact the, the shrine itself posted that it's not just this foreigner who's done that, it's been other people who ring the bell too loud at night. And that's why, they, they, what, that's why they're, they're, they're what, what happens at night is from now on, they tie up, they tie a string around the rope and, and, and uh, tie it to the post so it's unable, you can't ring it. You know, it's unable, yeah, between certain hours between like 6, uh, 6 p.m. and 5 a.m. 
So even the site itself says it's not just foreigners, but everyone is targeting this foreigner and making him out to be the worst person. I will say he was rude. Right. He, he, I mean, you, you can definitely handle that. He could have definitely handled that better. And that, saying damate okay to, a, 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 you know, shut up you to a person you don't know who's filming you, it's just, it's just, you're just escalating things. There's really no reason he should have done that. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you're young, dumb, and full of uh, dumb, uh, more dumb than, uh, you gotta watch the mouth here. Um, yeah, you tend to escalate things. And I, from the video, it sounds like he already apologized once and that wasn't enough for the woman. She, she, she felt like he, they didn't understand why, why she was insisting they uh, apologize and what they were doing was bad. Uh, she felt like they didn't understand it. Oh, oh, but but it, what was interesting about uh, talking to you want to play your switch? Play with switch. Play with play with your switch if you want. But what was interesting? Um, what I got out of this is talking to my students. They one of them studied Christianity quite a bit, and she said, you know, foreigners only believe in one God, and in Japan we have many gods. And she said, I don't think foreigners really res can can really un many foreigners. Um, or maybe she she put this out as a possibility that maybe they didn't quite understand that this is a holy place, you know. Like, and she talked about church and like, what if we went went into a church and we were rude? That would, you know, maybe they would understand that. But going to a shrine outside, the feeling is different, and the attitudes in shrines is very different. It's much more jovial, and you can be loud. And they're, like when we go to the shrine near my house, kids are playing switch. Uh, it's a, there's a covered like patio area in, inside and people on rainy days kids will come and play switch there and people people will play soccer on the grounds or throw a baseball around so it's a very different attitude but it's still God uh, so she thinks that maybe foreigners don't quite understand uh, the, the difference Oops, is, there we go uh, she you know they don't they don't appreciate that that it's holy it's a holy place it's a solemn place so you should treat it with a little more respect than she felt these foreigners did. And, and the other thing about Japan that uh, that they, my students suggested, was that a lot, of, a lot of foreigners consider Japan to be kind of a Disney world, not a real place, everything's fun. Which is true, some people think it's all, all you know, it's just a Disney place because it's, because a lot of what they see here is, is um, rem, you know, reminds me, remind, reminds them of the anime that they see and the manga that they see that they, and it, so it doesn't feel real, you know, uh, to them. I mean, I've lived here for, for over 30, 30 years now, 33 years. So to me, uh, this is my life. I don't really see it as a Disneyland at all. Um, but I can see, I can understand why some foreigners might act that way, especially tourists. Now, then this is an interesting uh, problem from my point of view, because it wasn't just the tourists, but it was in this case, it was the long-term resident this guy has been the the tour guide you know the, the british tour guide has been living in japan for eight years and he's married to a japanese and he's fairly fluent in japanese um but he's also being protective of his clients right so maybe that that might have played part of a factor into this um, that might have factored into this uh, into his behavior right he's, he's being paid by these people to show them around and maybe he didn't quite explain how to behave at the shrine properly um, which is maybe why you need a license right that, might, that could be one thing uh, so there are a lot, I mean there are a lot of things to consider the fact that uh, the fact that the tourists involved don't understand that it's a holy place uh, they don't know how to they don't know how to ring the bell properly um, uh, they're also everything's just fun for them so they're they're not taking things seriously I'm going too slow people are passing um, they're on vacation, so they're relaxed. And you know, when you're on vacation, you know what they say, what, what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas kind of thing. You know, people don't, um, people behave differently sometimes when they're on vacation. They relax and they do things they normally wouldn't do, right? Um, so there are a lot of things to consider. And, and again, the fact that he was a uh, tourist guide being paid by, by these people to take him around. And when those, his clients are being attacked, of course, you're gonna become defensive. So instead of just uh, apologizing like he should have and said, oh, I'm sorry, uh, they didn't know. Uh, uh, it's my fault, I should have taught them better. Um, or something like that. Um, uh, 
instead of doing that, he, dub he, he doubled down on the defense and, and became aggressive at the end. Now, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a private chat, that's uh, a DM that's going around on Twitter right now that, uh, uh, that claims to be the guy who, the tour guide. And he said he would apologize to the woman if he had the chance, and he was explaining the situation. Um, um, but, you know, uh, it, it, does, it does put things in a slightly different light. Which means, which, which, what I mean to say is that he doesn't look nearly as bad <laughs> uh, as if you just watch the videos. But I think I've explained a lot of the backstory here. Uh, uh, but the other, the other question is: Is it racist to insist someone speak your language? Um, I don't know, but it's definitely assholeish, you know. <laughs> he definitely speaks Japanese well. Oh yeah, what he claims in the, in the in the DM that's been publicly all over, publicly posted all over all over Twitter, and reposted, and uh, what's it called when you promote? I don't I don't use Twitter anymore because it's such a toxic place. But um, what's it called? You like something on Twitter and you repost it. I don't know. So uh, he claims that. Um, he has, he thought that she had spoken some English earlier, so she spoke English. So he tried that method first, and he assumed that it would be easier to communicate with her in English first, because he's, you know, he was saying my her English is probably better than my Japanese. I should have said that, um, but he was wrong. Uh, but you know, I think that's kind of a weak. It's a weak and ungaijin like. A response because most foreigners think that their Japanese is a lot better than everyone else's. Uh, any J English person, any Japanese person's English. Um, yeah, and if he's been here for eight years, he's. I mean, this, this is kind of kind of a funny thing about being a gaijin in Japan. When you start your start when you start studying Japanese, in the very beginning, you can't speak any Japanese, so you're just happy to speak to with anyone who can speak English. You're like, oh, you speak English, so you can communicate because you know you need human interaction. But after studying Japanese for a while, uh, you become kind of confident, and then you get kind of annoyed that, that people st still insist on speaking English with you, because you feel like my Japanese is better, and I, I want to practice it, and I'm getting I'm getting to the point where I don't need people to speak English with me, and then you get really good at Japanese, like like usually about the six year level, six when you hear six to ten years, I think. And a lot of foreigners get really aggressive about their Japanese, and I've I've gone through this stage as well. Like, hey man, I speak Japanese. You don't don't, don't speak English with me. Um, but then, if you've been here for a long, long time, basically you realize it's just a it's a pointless uphill battle, or, or uh, you know, a, a baneless a baneless. It's something you do. I mean, I, that's that's improper English. In vain. It's something. It's just it's just pointless. It's pointless to get angry because so many people. Um, you know, you're not going to educate everybody. So when someone tries speaking English with you, you know, if you have the time and it's not really slowing anything down, you go ahead and let them speak English with you. You can respond in English or Japanese, whatever. But the, the point is, th there's no point in getting angry about it or, or defensive or aggressive about it. Um, so the, the, the uh, you, you, you get to the stage, uh, which I think I'm at now, which, which is fine, you know. Um, I'll let people assume I don't speak Japanese for a while, and then I'll switch over into Japanese if it's, if I just want to get things done a little bit faster. But um, oh yeah, but is it is, is there racism involved here? I think I think definitely the way this guy has been treated on the on Twitter is definitely racist because um, there's all there's a lot of rude Japanese people who do rude stuff um, all over Japan, and you don't see them on Twitter, you know. Not much. I mean, there's people that, where there's something ex extreme, like there have been cases of Japanese playing pranks. Like there's a, a few cases of Japanese going into um, convenience stores and getting in the uh, ice cream refrigerator or laying down on the ice cream. Or, or um, oh yeah, you, I'm sure you've heard about the uh, the the, uh, the restaurants where the, the Japanese will some some Jap some Japanese kid uh, licked the. Uh, the pepper dispenser, or what I don't know what it was, or soy, or soy sauce dispenser, or you know, do rude, rude things like that. When it's extreme like that, then it's published everywhere. But otherwise, I think foreigners are, or over, I think Japanese are overly sensitive about improper foreigners. But it could also be the fact that 
Japanese are tired of so many tourists coming over here. Now I live in Nagoya, which is not a super touristic uh, city, so it's a beautiful, beautiful city. It's a beautiful uh, major city. It's like the fourth largest city in Japan, but we don't see a lot of tourists here. Uh, so we, there's there's no um, you know there's no over tourism uh, feelings here. Uh, but I suppose that if you're in Tokyo and in Kyoto, then you might feel a little um, fatigue, tourist fatigue. And there's a, there's a guy who put, there's a guy in Tokyo who's at the Hachiko statue, uh, about also about ten, a little bit more than ten days ago, before this uh, Yasaka incident. He he went out of his way to post like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. He made ten posters, and then a huge, and he put them all. Each poster is like an A3, like this size. And then he put them all together and made a huge sign, basically telling foreigners how to behave. And I would say that a lot, a lot of stuff that he said on there were just like common sense stuff. But a lot of things he, he was telling foreigners to do or not to do were things that Japanese people do all the time too. For example, I'm, I often, if you're in like Nagoya Station, there are Japanese who get in your way with their luggage because they're, they're carrying luggage. But that's, that's, I don't even blame them. I mean, they're, they're traveling. When you have, if you go to Nagoya Station, there's people with luggage. I mean, that's, what do you expect them to do? Not have luggage? I mean, they're, they're traveling, so. Um, he wrote things like that, that people get in my way, you know, annoyed by that. Oh, yeah? Okay, I'll put it on. Um, he wants to connect to the internet. And the guy also wrote a, wrote a poster saying, don't, don't walk around and drink or eat, which is bullshit because Japanese people do that all the time. I'm often surprised at how early in the day I'll see a Japanese guy walking by with a beer uh, in his hand or even bicycling with a beer like nobody cares it's fine it's actually it's actually legal to do that uh to, to drink and drink and ride your bicycle but but japanese people do it but you don't see anyone making i don't see i mean maybe maybe there are posts out there maybe there's somebody complaining about it but i don't see any complaints um, yeah anyway my original um idea about this video was to talk about uh some of um unrested material recently he's been talking about um the old days you know he's bringing up the past so which um he's he apparently his viewers really enjoy uh, um and it's kind of you know i've i've i've, I've uh, started remembering the first days of oops of youtube when we all started so it's kind of interesting so i may try to respond to some of those but if you're interested in learning about the the origins of YouTubers, uh, of J-vloggers, or the, the, the Japanese YouTube community, you might want to check out his videos uh, Unrested. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. But anyway, um, that's all for now. We're, all, we're almost at the Jichan Bachan's house, right? And we're going to pick them up, drop off some bananas. We're always bringing them some fruits or breads and uh, take them back to do the clean campaign and clean up the community, yes. So, um, although I am... I retain a lot of my annoying, loud American characteristics uh, in Japan. I do value the community uh, work uh, ethic here. So whenever there's a chance for all of us to get together and do something, uh, which is pretty often, actually, uh, my family, we're the presidents of our uh, neighborhood this year. So we're, we're involved in almost every meeting. Which is, people take turns, it doesn't mean we're elected or anything. It's just basically our turn to be president, so. <laughs> which is basically like the political system. They just take turns becoming prime minister. Um, it's not like a big popularity contest like in America. Whoa, which is something I'd like to talk about too, because um, there's an article about what people thought about, uh, think about Trump being um, being uh, convicted of all, on all the, on 34 charges. So if you like, uh, you can, I, I have to read it. But uh, it's in Japanese, of course, so I have to read that a little bit slower. A little bit slower in Japanese than I'm reading than I am in listening. But but I'll get to that soon. Bic, you want to say goodbye? Goodbye. Anything else? Thank you for watching. Bye. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. And um, more videos coming soon. All right. Take it. Take it. Take it. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, relax. Relax. Was <laughs> that 20? 20, 20. 18 seconds, 19 seconds, 20 seconds, 21, 22. Hands up. Legs up. Legs up, Vic. Legs up. 
No, no, keep your knees up too. Keep your knees up too. Yes, this oh, is yes, it. Okay.